Today I have a Swag John Swagger 5 electric scooter. This is the full size scooter, just like the Bird or Lime scooter, and it has a problem with the battery. So, today in this video, I'm gonna try and repair this battery, or if I can't repair properly, I have to replace the battery. So, I'm gonna disassemble the battery pack and show you what's inside. On this label, it doesn't say how many amp hour. Uh, the battery capacity is, but it says 222 watt hour. So if you do the math, uh, the battery pack is 42 volt DC, but nominal voltage is 37 volts. So you take 222 divided by 37, you get exactly 6. So and my guess is uh, the battery pack is about 6 amp hour. And we're going to see about that pretty soon. But first let me go over the specs of the scooter and show you what it has front hub motor and that's an 8 inch hub motor and the tire is pneumatic so there's a tube inside and what that means is that it'll be very easy to replace with an aftermarket uh, tire and tube the handlebar is foldable and it locks onto the uh, back here so you can use this to carry the scooter around. It's got a front LED headlight, rear brake light, and this is real LED light. It's not a fake piece of plastic, it's a real LED. It's got a disc brake on the back here, and it's not hydraulic, it's just a regular manual cable pull disc brake. The handlebar is removable, as you can see here and you can do the same thing on the other side and to make it more compact there is a kickstand on the left side so it can stand on its own so overall this is a very good scooter packed with bells and whistle literally there's a bell on the front but unfortunately the design of the battery is not too good um, when you ride a the scooter there's a lot of vibration and the battery is taking the brunt and the uh, solder joints on the battery start to disintegrate and that's the main problem with all of these scooters if the battery is not welded properly it will come loose very easily all right let's try and remove the battery pack we have to remove first the plastic cover which has about 12 screws on here so here's the inside of the battery pack and as you can see it doesn't look like it's an original battery pack that's because the previous owner attempted to repair the battery pack and he gave up on it on the left side here we got the controller of the scooter and as you can see it is quite small there is still plenty of room to upgrade to a bigger controller if you want to go faster let's check on the voltage of the battery pack 2.7 volts that is very low supposed to be about 40 volts so let's uh, remove the battery pack and see what the problem is and to remove the battery pack you just need to remove four screws there are two plastic rails on here that support the battery so there are two screws on here and then there are two more screws on the other side so here is the battery pack packed together with duct tape, uh, a lot of cable ties and you can see here this part here is missing uh, the connection so he's actually using the solder itself to connect between this terminal and that terminal and it came out loose it broke out and over here at least he used a piece of stranded copper wire but using a stranded copper wire is a big problem let me show you why you see this wire over here it's not completely soldered in and there are a lot of loose smaller wires and this can touch other terminals around it look at the craftsmanship and this here is about to come loose check this out 
And because he doesn't insulate the entire battery pack, before he put it in the scooter, he actually sorted out in a couple of places, like right here, the aluminum is melted. And over here also, right there. Check out this terminal. I think there's a short right here, and we got black soot all over the place, and it melted the piece of plastic here. It's coming loose. And this, I think, is where we got a short. Right there. And I think this is at the point where he gave up. There was probably a small explosion enough to scare him. Hey John, if you're watching this, I'm not laughing at you or criticizing you or anything like that, okay? All I want to say is, whatever you're doing, don't quit your day job. That's all I want to say. Let's check out the voltage of the individual cells here. 4 volts. 4. So it looks like the battery pack is fine. There's no problem with the battery itself. It's just a problem with the connection between the battery pack and the BMS. Let me zoom in and show you what kind of battery this is. INR 18650P and the color looks like Samsung but I think this is just a generic aftermarket 18650 cells. We got 20A I think this is the discharge rate and that is 20 amp discharge rate 7.4 watt hour you take that divide by 3.7 you got 2 amp hour for each cell so yes in fact this is a 6 amp hour 42 volt battery pack because we got three 2 amp hour cells connected in parallel and then that is connected to the next three cells in series total of 30 cells so my next step is i'm going to desolder all of this connection and then we'll resolder all the connections together all right i have just removed about six terminals and look at how much solder john used that is a lot of solder for just six terminals john obviously was trying too hard but it's not working out for him so over here i have solder a nickel strip onto the terminals and it looks nice and compact and this is before that is after so this is the nickel strip that i'm using it already has solder on it so it's called pretend nickel strip and if you want to search for it i think it's also called solar bus wire pre-soldered this one is just a bare nickel strip and it does not have solder on it so i can also use this but i have to put solder on it first before i put it on here so using a nickel strip that has uh, solder on it already makes my job a lot easier. The size of this nickel strip is 5 mm wide and 0.2 mm thick. And you can tell the difference between the one that already has solder on it with the one that doesn't have solder on it. You see this one here, it looks like it, it has a honeycomb uh, shape on the strip whereas this looks nice and smooth so this one is bare nickel strip does not have solder this one has solder let me show you how this battery pack fails so we got the BMS board on the top the actual battery pack on the bottom and usually there are anchor points with screw holes uh, to mount the BMS board to the battery pack but on this case there are none there are no screw mounts that secure the board to the battery pack instead uh, Swagtron uses these as anchor point and mounting point for the board and these are the electrical 
uh, connections between the BMS and the battery pack and they use nickel strip wire that is small and thin and these are not strong enough to support the BMS to hold the BMS together uh, to the battery pack and when you ride the scooter there are a lot of vibrations and over time and it will cause metal fatigue and crack like these connections here the nickel strip is cracked and it's separated just like this nickel strips so when I bend it enough it will break away so I've got my nickel strip here and let's put it on here so first thing I gotta do is to use flux and spread it all over the terminals here the entire top part of the terminal with flux you make your job a lot easier without flux it won't stick and then I'm gonna put my solder on You have to put solder on first. Okay, just like that. And because I'm adding the solder directly onto the nickel strip itself and not the actual battery terminal, so I'm not gonna worry about adding too much heat onto the battery terminals. So now I'm gonna solder the nickel strip onto the BMS first. And because the nickel strip is too wide it's as wide as this terminal here i'm gonna leave a little bit of room on the top part of the terminal here okay so let me show you what that means so i push it down you melt and sink down okay so now the top part of the terminal is exposed so now i can put more solder on the top part and flow it on top of the nickel strip so here you go there so that way not only do I have solder on the bottom of the nickel strip I also have solder that flow from the bottom out and on top to cover the top of the nickel strip so the nickel strip is sandwiched between two layers of solder and that will make it twice at least twice as strong compared to if you just put uh, the solder on uh, just the bottom of the nickel strip now I'm gonna bend this down so now I'm just gonna press it down okay. and it should stick Just like that and now because the part that I put solder on is bigger than the nickel strip now I can add solder onto the outside of the nickel strip and then you flow solder onto the top of the nickel strip so here you go I'm gonna push it down with my screwdriver and then I put solder onto the side and then flow to the other side and also to the bottom that way it has solder on both the bottom and the top that will make it at least twice as strong if not three, three times stronger so here's what it looks like I also left a little bit of slack on the nickel strip see here it's got a little bit of extra length to it so that when this board moves up and down this still has a little bit of give so that it doesn't break when there's a lot of vibrations so now I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of the terminals and that should be good to go all right so I've done soldering all the terminals together 
looks beautiful and here is the other side and let's measure the voltage output that goes to the controller 40 volts so it's working let's put it to the test plugged in the xt60 connector to the controller and let's try and turn it on the front panel has a broken power button so I'm gonna have to use a screwdriver to turn it on all right here we go it's on and here we go it's working up to 20 miles per hour that's pretty cool Now that we know it's working, it's time to pack it up and put it back into the scooter. So here it is. I'm going to keep the uh, cable ties and these are for securing the BMS to the battery. And these cable ties are the only things that secure the BMS to the battery besides the solder connections, which is a very bad design. I cannot drill holes onto this board to secure the board onto the battery so I think this is uh, the best way to secure the board to the battery so now I'm just gonna use foam and clear tape to wrap up the battery for insulation so here it is all nicely wrapped and well insulated there are no terminals to expose and there's no chance to shut out. Uh, check that out. Nice and neat in there. Got my charger here and let's plug it in and see if it would charge. Light turns red so it's charging. There you go. Go! Wow, that's fast! Faster than my e-bike! And that's all for now folks. Last thing I'm going to do is to fix this power button here. I guess this is a pretty common problem with this model. I'll show you that in the next video because this video is getting too long. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.